This is the video for the January 2019 Algebra Regents exam, the short response questions, 25 to 37 answers. So in question number 25, you want to solve algebraically this equation. So you want to get all your x's onto one side, get all your plain numbers onto the other. So I would start off by doing minus 1.02x from both sides, then subtract 2,000 from both sides. So in a normal problem, just be careful. <clears throat> just be careful because if you multiply or divide by a negative number, meaning if this bottom number is negative right here, all right, remember that you have to flip the sign. In this case, we don't have to, but just make sure, be careful in this one. What makes this one hard is you're, you have your letter, your variable on the right-hand side. Remember, we wanna bring things straight down. So 1600 divided by 0 0.02 is 80,000 here. And here you just want to bring down your X. We don't want to write your answer like this. We always want the letter to come first. So we need to flip it around so that the letter does come first. When we flip it around, you have to flip the sign. So it's X is greater than 80,000. Question number 26. Um, this is the number of people at or the game number and the number of people attending the game. State the type of function that best fits the given data. So the type of function, if you notice, if you look at the actual data, or if you want to like stat plot and type these into your L1 and L2, you would see that these form a straight line. The reason that they form a straight line is because you're adding the same number each time. What we're adding to the attendance each time is 87. So because it is a constant rate of change, adding 87 each time, it is going to be linear. You could also graph it and see that it would be linear as well because it would form a straight line. Question number 27, we're solving for, we're solving the uh, quadratic equation algebraically. So you could do this in one of two ways. We could set it equal to zero, which is already is, and do reverse FOIL. What times what is negative nine that adds up to negative eight. So that would be X minus nine times X plus one. Draw your line down the middle, set both sides equal to zero and solve, you get X equals nine and X equals negative one. Or you could use the quadratic formula. Remember the quadratic formula is on your reference sheet, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. Our A value would be a one here. Our B value would be a negative eight because of the minus sign. And our C value would be a negative nine. Sub those numbers in, we have a perfect square right here of 100, so that changes into 10. Split it into 2, 8 plus 10 over 2, 8 minus 10 over 2, and we get those same two answers of 9 and negative 1. Explain the first step that you, would, that you use to solve the given equation. Well, it all depends on which way you did it, all right? If you did it this way, you can't say reverse FOIL. Reverse FOIL is technically not a proper mathematical term. What you really did was you factored the trinomial. That's really what you did there. Over here, you could say that you plug the numbers into the quadratic formula. In question number 28, the graph of F of T models, the height in feet that a B is flying above the ground over the time that it traveled in T seconds. State all the time intervals where the B's rate of change, rate of change, remember, is slope, is zero, all right, where the rate of change is zero. Well, when the rate of change is zero, it is a straight line going across, all right, it's a horizontal line. So in between two seconds and six seconds, and then from 14 to 15. All right, that's one it is. There's a couple different ways that you could write it. You could write it like this with the brackets. You could have said two to six seconds and 14 to 15 seconds. You could have also used inequality signs like these, all right? Um, explain your reasoning. The slope is zero. The height didn't change in that point in time. It remained constant. In question number 29, graph the function. So all that you're gonna do is type this into your Y equals. When you go to type that into your Y equals, then hit second and table to find all your coordinates. So then it says if the G of X, oh, by the way, make sure that you have arrows on the ends because that goes on and on forever in both directions. If the G of X equals this, determine if the F of X is greater than the G of X when X equals four. So when X equals four for this equation, the F of X, one, two, three, four, I can go up to this point right here and I can see that it equals nine. All right, that's where I'm getting this nine from. 
Um, and then to find out the other equation for the g of x, all right, the g of x, I'm going to take the four and sub it right into here. So 1.5 times four minus three, you get an answer of three. So is nine bigger than three? Yes, it is, all right? And this just this work being shown right here justifies your answer. In number 30, determine algebraically the zeros of this trinomial, all right? What you need to do, because it's x to the third power, we can't do reverse FOIL. We can't do the quadratic formula. The first thing that we need to do is factor out the three X. We need to take out a three from each term and we need to take out an X from each term. When we do that, what's left over is X squared plus seven X plus 12. And we wanna set that equal to zero. Now what you can do is you can do reverse FOIL to this trinomial. You can factor the trinomial. What times what is 12 that adds up to seven? Well, it's four times three or three times four. We just leave this three X outside the parentheses set each of these equal to zero. So three X equals zero, X plus three equals zero, X plus four equals zero. Solve for X, you get zero, negative three and negative four. Now notice in this question, it did say solve algebraically. This is what the graph would look like, all right? These are where your zeros are. Notice that they're at negative four, negative three and zero. But if you solve this one graphically, you would not get credit because it did say solve it algebraically. In question number 31, we have um, temperature data from Miami and Los Angeles. Always when you have data like this, type it into your L1 and L2. We want to then do stat calc and one variable statistics because we need to figure out the standard deviation, the range and the IQR, all right? With the standard deviation, remember that this is the symbol for standard deviation. We wanna know which location has the least variability. All right, the least variability in how you arrived at your answer. Well, the standard deviation does tell you the least variability. Notice that for Los Angeles, the standard deviation, and this would just show up right on your calculator, is 3.64, where Miami is 7.22. So Los Angeles had the lowest standard deviation. If you found the range, remember the range is the max minus the min. So if we found that, the least variability would also be Los Angeles, because it would be 13 compared to 27. And for your interquartile range, it would be Q3 minus Q1. When you do that, notice that Los Angeles, again, has the least variability. So Los Angeles, because it has the lower standard deviation, lower range, and lower IQR. In question number 32, state the quadratic equation below for the, or solve the quadratic equation below for the exact values of X. Exact values means that we need to leave it in radical form, all right, because that's going to give you the exact values, not decimals, all right. If they came out to be nice, neat decimals, it would be one thing, but these don't, all right. So the exact value, you have to leave it in radical form. So I would add five to both sides and then divide by four, divide by four. So we have X squared equals 20. Take the square root of each side and you get X equals, be careful, plus or minus radical 20. Be very, very careful there. Question number 33, Marilyn collects old dolls. She purchases a doll for $450. Her, the value of the doll increases by 2.5% each year. Now remember to make a percent into a decimal, we have to move the decimal point over two places. So that becomes 0 0.025. Write an equation for the value V of the doll's T after the purchase. So because it has this V here, you must have a V equals for your equation. Um, otherwise, if you don't have the V equals, you're writing an expression and not an equation. So you would not get full credit. We also have to make sure that we're using T because that's what it says. So $450 is the initial value. So that goes outside the parentheses. The value is increasing, so it would be one plus. Remember, it was if it was decreasing, it would be one minus. So it's one plus our decimal here, 0 0.025, and that's all to the t power. You could write it like this, or we could add those together, and you could write it like this. Assuming that the doll's rate of appreciation remains the same, will the doll's value be doubled in 20 years? So now what we want to do for this 20 is we want to sub it in for t. All right, we want to sub it in for T right here and crank out that number. It's $737.83. 
is that double the initial value is 737 double 450. No, 450 times two is 900. So that is less than that. 737 is less than 900. In question number 34, again, anytime that you have a table like this, type it into your L1 and L2. All right, we're going to write the linear regression equation. So stat calc number four, which is linear regression. And we want to round the values to the nearest tenth. So it's going to be y equals 1.9x plus 29.8. Make sure that you have your y equals there. If you said um, if you said f of x, technically in this one, that would not be really correct. Um, I think they would probably give you credit for it, but it's using x and y, so we want to use x and y. State the value of the correlation coefficient. That is your R value. So you have to make sure that your stat diagnostics are turned on by going on the mode button. Otherwise, you won't see this number. So when you do that, you get 0 0.3. What does that indicate? 0 0.3 is very, very close to 0. Remember, any values that are close to negative 1 or 1 are a strong correlation. Because this is closer to 0, close to 0 is a weak correlation and it would be positive because our number is positive if this was a negative then it would be negative but this represents a weak positive correlation in question number 35 miranda received the movie gift card for a hundred dollars to her local theater matinee tickets cost 750 each and evening tickets cost 1250 each so we want to write an equation that represents that so 750 times the number of matinee tickets plus 1250 times the number of evening tickets. And um, we want to know how she could spend the money on her gift card. Well, if she only has $100, she could spend equal to $100 or she could spend less than it. Could she spend, could she spend more than $100? No. So that's going to be less than or equal to 100. Solve that equation. Do, 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 do. Subtract 7.5x, um, divide by 12.5 to get the y all by itself, and we end up with this equation. Go to graph that equation. All right, that's what this is representing. This would be a solid line because of the or equal to, and we're shading <clears throat> down below. <clears throat> what is the maximum number of matinee tickets you could purchase with her gift card? Well, that would be the x value. When we go along with the x value, she could spend, she could buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Could she go to the 14th one? No, our graph doesn't reach there. So the most number, because you, and you can't have a partial ticket, so you can't have a decimal there. So the most number of that she could buy would be 13, right? Because you can't have a partial ticket. In question number 36, <clears throat> on a spring day, Elroy noticed the noted the time and temperature. All right, so here's his different readings. All right, um, at 6 a.m., the temperature was 50. So 6 a.m., 50, you put a dot. For the next four hours, the temperature rose three degrees each hour. So notice that I put the seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, I kept on counting by ones. That makes life a lot easier if they give you a graph like this to fill in those missing numbers. So each time, notice each hour, I'm going up three, up three, up three, up three. The next six hours, the temperature rose two degrees each hour. So up two, up two, up two, up two, up two, up two. So now I'm to 4 p.m. The temperature stayed steady until six. So it goes straight across until 6 p.m. For the next two hours, the temperature dropped one degree an hour. So one degree, one degree. And then the temperature dropped steadily until the temperature was 56 at midnight. So notice we got to figure out what steadily means here. All right. At, at midnight at 12, it was 56. So I know that I'm ending up here. I'm starting here. So that is a span of four hours because it's from eight to 12 and it's dropping from 72 degrees to 56 degrees. So 16 degrees over four hours, that would be four degrees per hour. So down four, down four, down four. State the entire time interval for which the temperature was increasing. Increasing is going up, so that is between there and there. So in between 6 a.m. and 4 p.m. Determine the average rate of change. Remember, that is your slope, so you have to use the slope formula. Y2 minus Y1 
over x2 minus x1. So when you go to plug in those numbers, we're going from 6 p.m. to midnight. So 6 p.m., our temperature is 6 at 6 p.m. It's 74. So 6 comma 74 to midnight. Midnight is 12 and 56 degrees. So we plug those numbers in. We get 18 over negative 18 over 6. Negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3 degrees per hour. In, and in number 37, a recreation center ordered a total of 15 tricycles and bicycles from a sporting goods store. The number of wheels for all the tricycles and bicycles totaled 38. So remember, on a tricycle, there's three tires. On a bicycle, there's two tires. Write a linear, write, write a linear system of equations that models this scenario where T is the number of tricycles, B is the number of bicycles. So they said that they ordered a total of 15. So tricycles plus bicycles equals 15. For the second equation, this is the hard part of this question. You have to figure out with the number of wheels. So three wheels on a tricycle. So three times T plus two times the number of bicycles because there's two wheels on a bicycle equals 38 wheels altogether. So when we have this, um, we now need to, that is the equation. On the set of axes, graph these systems below. So what I wanna do is I wanna rearrange, all right? I wanna rearrange for y equals. Now, it's sort of a little bit confusing what letter you would solve for. Notice that the bicycles are on, I put the bicycles on the y axis, I put my tricycles on the x axis. So that means my bicycles are really my y value. So to get an equation that you can graph, you need to rearrange for Y, which is really rearranging for B. That's what I'm doing here in the red. I'm getting the B all by itself. So I have B equals negative T plus 15. That's really Y equals negative X plus 15. Type that into your Y equals and then do second and table to find your points for the red line here. For the other one, again, Tri bicycles is my B and my Y value. Tricycles is my X value. So I want to get rearranged for B equals or Y equals again. When I do that, I get negative three over two X or T plus 19. Graph that by typing it into Y equals instead of hitting second and table. So I can see that these are crossing right here. All right. Based on your graph of this scenario, could the recreation center have ordered 10 tricycles? So 10 tricycles. If we go over to 10, we don't end up with a matching number. We want to know where the intersection point is, all right, because that's the only combination that works, all right? The only combination that works for a total of 15 um, vehicles and a total of 38 wheels, the only one that crosses right here is for eight tricycles and seven bicycles. That's the only one that works. That's the intersection point. So on this one, the passing score was a 27. So you needed 14 multiple choice questions. Correct.